Good morning. Uh, my name's Jack. I'm here in Black Rock Forest. Behind me, we had the Reservoir Brook. The Reservoir Brook is coming out of the upper reservoir and goes down into the village of Cornwall and eventually out into the Hudson River. This is surface water, meaning it's water on top of the ground, not in the ground. And it also comes from a reservoir that is used for drinking. So surface water, drinking, it's very much like uh, the way New York City gets its water from all of the reservoirs in the upstate New York. So we're going to check to see if this is drinking water, how do we know it's good and clean enough for us to drink? Well, there are ways to do that and some of them are pretty interesting. All right, one thing we need to do to help check the water quality to see if this is good clean water to drink is to see what the chemistry is. We're only going to do a couple of features of the possible chemical parts of the water. One is going to see the dissolved oxygen and the other part is going to see, uh, we're going to check on the uh, acidity, the pH levels of this. Uh, we'll also go and do temperature, air and water temperature, but that always plays an important factor too. So. I'm holding a BH test kit right now. Uh, this particular one uses a, a, a color comparator. Uh, we're going to use fill up this ampule with uh, some of the water and see what the oxygen level is in the water. Okay, I'm going to rinse out the vial a couple of times. We are going to use oh, 30 milliliters. We stick the ampule inside, snap it off, and the ampule automatically sucks up the water from our sample and quickly turns the color. I'm going to wait a little bit, give it some time and then compare it to the standards that I showed you earlier. All right, you can see that the ampule is now a nice dark blue. When we put it up against our color comparator, we get a reading of somewhere, I would say, between 10 and 12 parts per million of dissolved oxygen. That is also milligrams per liter, another way of saying it. Parts per million is the PPM part. 10 and 12 is a nice level of dissolved oxygen in water for critters to live. The next chemical test that we're gonna do has to do with determining the amount of acid in this water. As you know, it's, I was calling it surface water. Surface water comes from precipitation, rainfall. And in the northeast part of the country here, we uh, suffer a little bit with something called acid rain. It was much, much worse years ago. It seems to be getting better. But we need to keep check on the water that we use for our reservoirs. So we have a color comparator here, like we did for the dissolved oxygen. We're going to use an indicator. And the vial here. We're going to rinse it out a couple of times. And we need to be sure that we have 10 milliliters. In order to get to 10 milliliters, you got to practice a special technique that your teachers learned in college. There is a little curve to water inside a tube called the meniscus. The bottom of that curve is matching the line. We now take our indicator and we turn it upside down and count 10 drops. Okay. All right. We have our 10 drops in. Put the top on and simply tip it over a couple of times. The vial turns a color, our sample turns a color, 
And now we're going to try to match it up with the standards in our comparator. So far it looks good to me. What we're doing is if we get down to the red spectrum, we're into more acid. If we're up into the blues and purples, we're into base. So what we are looking for, for a nice uh, neutral level, is kind of a green color. And that's kind of, and the number will be a number seven we're looking for. You slip it in, hold it up, and see, you could see where the seven is. The sample is there. I'm going to move it over and check to see. Oh, it's greener than the six. The six still has a little bit of yellow in it. And move it back to the seven. I think we have a pretty neutral pH level here, which is going to be good. One last uh, piece of information we need to do is to get temperature readings. So we put one thermometer into the water, let it sit there for a while, hang this on a little branch somewhere, and get the air temperature. We have in Celsius let's call it 12 degrees Celsius okay and our air temperature Looks like 11 degrees for the air. All right, we just checked on the chemistry of the water. Now we get to do something very interesting. We're going to try to find some of the critters that actually live in the water. This is going to be the biology part of the stream. Depending upon the quality of the water, we will have a, a certain bunch of critters we're going to call them macro invertebrates macro meaning large invertebrates they have no backbone a lot of them are larval insect stage of life and in order to do that we need to use a little net with a special mesh in the back this is a d-shaped net we're going to be using and we're going to be putting this in the water kicking up the rocks and stuff and try and collect these little macro invertebrates. The places we use in the stream are the places where there are riffles. Now the riffle is going to be an area like this where the water is bubbling over rocks, mixing with the air, and the dissolved oxygen is going to be at a nice high level. The good critters we're looking for need this dissolved oxygen. And the reading we got on our uh, color comparator there was between 10 and 12 parts per million of dissolved oxygen. Those are good readings for these kinds of critters. They're going to like that amount. So I'm hoping to catch some very interesting macro invertebrates. The real good ones, the ones that we really want to see, are going to be stoneflies, mayflies, caddisflies. We might find ones that are not as important that can live in less levels of oxygen. They could be dragonfly larvae. They could even be leeches, which would be interesting if we do catch them. Uh, they might be here. By the way, if we do catch something that is not a macroinvertebrate, like a salamander, like a fish, like a frog, they don't count. They're not a part of the study. But we will put them in a separate little container so we can take a look at them and enjoy them. But they are not what we're looking for. We're looking for macro invertebrates. Here we go. So the riffle is behind me. I have the water coming down. I put the net 
flat to the ground, the surface of the stream. This is a nice rocky bottom stream. The critters live in the rocks. They like to eat the algae. And sometimes other critters eat them. There's a whole long food chain going on here that's very important. So we're going to kick up the bottom with my feet and do that for a while. And I'll move to another section and do this. If you can do it roughly for five minutes, which is actually a long time, you're going to catch some stuff. Let's see what we get. Sometimes you can find things very quickly. There you are. This is a nice stone fly that I could see right away. Ah, uh, there are other little things moving around in there. Let's rinse this off. We'll rinse it into the bucket. Okay. Very often you don't know what you have right away. You're going to have to take it up to the table and examine this carefully. So you're going to be surprised. Don't get too crazy if you say, I got nothing. You just might, but you don't see it right away. It's going to be something you find and discover when you slow down and take a good close look. All right, we're at the sorting out table. We're going to take our sample here now and start to see what we have inside it. I can see some things swimming around in there. But let's make sure we figure out which ones we have. Mm -hmm. That's another stone fly. All right. So we're going to try to separate them out by species, which ones are stoneflies, which ones are mayflies, which ones are caddisflies, and so on. So we have a couple of little ones in here right now that I can see. Uh, we use special tools like plastic spoons. This is pretty neat here. This is a stonefly and you can see the gills along the abdomen. There. It's upside down right now. Yeah, this mm. is neat. It has gills all along the other end. We're going to find a section where the stonefly should be. And we'll put our sample in there. Hopefully it flips over. There you go. Right. We'll sit them in the water. So I'm going to flip them over in here. Dump some of them out. Put this in the water again. Oh, we have some things. This one looks like the other one. Again, you can see the gills along the side abdomen. Another stonefly. Have a little wiggly one. Oh, here's another one. do we have in here? Oh! This one is a little bit different. If you, the three parts to the tail tell me that it's a mayfly. Again, another one to get. Very sensitive. Good one to have.
one's a little different. If you can look there, you could see this, this is, I believe, a midge. It sort of plants its back down and moves there and pushes that way. There it goes. Some of the stoneflies are more golden than others. Some are browner. Uh, some have flat heads. Some have uh, gills under their arms. Some of them have the gills on the on the uh, abdomen. And one telltale sign is there are two parts, a fork, to their tails. That has two, while this. Mayfly has three. Okay, we uh, spent some time now sorting out what we collected in the water. We're organizing what we have on this table. We got stoneflies and caddisflies, mayflies, dragonflies, all kinds of critters. And each of these critters will gives us a, gives us part of the story. Is the stream, good quality water. Is it good quality water for drinking? Is it clean enough for people to use? And what we found was an incredible number of stoneflies. We have caddisflies, we have mayflies. Those three are some of the key indicators of high quality water. Inside our little tray here, we have a, a lot of little critters floating around. We could sort them all out. You can see a lot of little moving things in there. They get all sorted out and counted. And there's a, a calculation that can be done. We rate, rate each one of the critters by either being very sensitive to pollution or somewhat sensitive, or they actually can tolerate polluted waters. If we get a good number in the sensitive, we would multiply that by three and come up with a number. Any number greater than 22 would give us excellent water. So this calculation is something that would be done uh, in the lab or just after you do the lab work and to come up with an answer. Do we have high quality water here in Black Rock Forest? And I think what you'll find with the number of stoneflies, caddisflies, and mayflies, the answer is going to be yes. All right, I just finished returning all the macroinvertebrates back to the stream. The ones that we found tell us we have pretty good quality water here, very nice. A good number of stoneflies, we had a caddisfly, mayflies. Those were key indicators of high quality water. And they're right here in our stream. The uh, water temperature matches up with a nice uh, temperature for them, 12 degrees Celsius. We had a DO of around 10 or 12 parts per million of dissolved oxygen. That's a great number for them. And the pH was about a seven. All of those things work out very nicely. We have um, one way of proving we have quality water by looking at the bugs that live in the water. We call them macroinvertebrates. Wish you were here.